Hello and welcome to another how to do things in OpenTX video. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at the sound, one of the most requested things, and this breaks into two parts really. The first is about how you set up basically switches so it will play something when you change a mode switch for example. And secondly, how you make your own sounds. It's one of the most popular questions I get because I've got a sound pack that I created myself and people always ask, where did that come from? It's interesting, can I have it? The answer is no, but I can show you how I did it and how you can create your own. Um, I'm using the Jumper T12 Pro for this one, mostly because it's my newest radio and I deliberately didn't set it up. But whatever you've got, if it's running OpenTX, so if it's a FreeSky radio or a Jumper or a Radio Master, you can set them all up the same way. All these ones uh, that I've got here, that is the X9D Pro, here's the Tyrannus X9D. Here's my x Lite and the QX7's around somewhere, but I couldn't get it out of the box to, uh, it's all buried. But I've set these up exactly the same way. And um, so although I'm demonstrating this on the T12, it's not specific to the T12, you can do it on anything. So before you start, you need to make sure you understand how you'd set modes and stuff. And I covered this in video number two, and I'll have a little uh, a link to the series over here, hopefully and you'll be able to see that. So I've just got this set up um, on one of my models. This is DASPI. This is my, my standard uh, sort of DASPI models, which are quite a lot, basically your, your tiny whoops. But um, it doesn't matter. Any, any, any quad will do you've previously set up. Just notice how bad that uh, plastic protector was on the screen. Let's get rid of that. It's now unprotected. Anyway, so let's go into that model, and we're going to go through all our screens there. Uh, you will notice that my mixers are set up with sort of my switch modes and you should have the same. And we're going to go all the way over to special functions. Special functions is where we set up our, our switches for doing stuff. And typically what you might want to do, because you'd have your FPV goggles on and when you switch you want to know that that switch is the right thing. So I like to, every time I do a switch, set something to say I've, I've done something, I know I've put the right switch. For example, this is my arm switch. So one thing I'd like to have is to say arm on it. So what I've got in here is I've got the standard SD card with the, um, the download from OpenTX. Again, that was covered, I think, in video one and you can check it out in the, the playlist. So in order to add something here, I'm gonna go into here, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna hit a button and basically I can either go through my channels like that or I can use a switch I want. So this is a little bit different to when you did it on the channels. On the channels if you hit a switch it would just say SG. This one is very specific about where it is so if I do that down you see the little down arrow up means the switch is off that's the up arrow. They are distinct so if I do that with the uh, arrow down it means this only takes effect when the switch is on. If I now go across to this one and the function I'm going to use is called play uh, track. Don't be confused with play sound. Play sound is basically just the, the beep noises. So you have different beeps in here that will, let's do that. Basically that beep free is, uh, is playing with, with the switch. So we're going to actually have the next one along, which is play track. Now if you press uh, your return key or your enter key on this one, you get a list of possible sounds you've got in there. We'll come to where these are coming from in a moment, but that is my arm switch. So what I'm going to do is hit return there. So now when I do my switch, armed. it says armed, armed, which is what I'm after. Now similarly, if you've got a free position switch, like this is my mode switch, so it's on acro, angle and horizon usually. If we go down to the next one and I have my switch in the middle and you see the little line saying that's the midpoint. Again I'm going to go over to play track and I'm going to search for something useful and I think it's uh, a stabilize is what it wants to talk about. Well, typically I can't seem to find it. Maybe they took it out. So I've used flight mode normal, flight mode normal. for that one. 
Um, what I can also do is we can go and we can have a a disarm play. So we go up and say play track disarmed and then we can have this one which is acro we can have play track and this is acro so if I now have um, I got armed, armed. Disarm. disarmed and I've got on my mode switch flight mode normal for uh, angle and if I go to upwards acro mode, got on. acro mode there and you can see that it just highlights where you are. Now the other thing you can do instead of just simply playing a track is to play a value. So if you were wondering like how long have I been in the air, you didn't have an OSD for example, one thing you could do is if I pick a switch, I pick that one and instead of play track you go to play value and then you can choose one of the things here. So you've got your normal bitch, I mean you can even call out your throttle position and stuff if you want to. But what we're interested in is a timer. So there we got timer one. If we then hit our button, 57 seconds. That will play. And if we just check that against what we've got here, we can put that on and then we can flick it. 54 seconds. And it will play what we got. Now as far as playing values, um, it depends what you've got on your quad. If you've got like telemetry, for example you've got RSSI information, you could play that. If you've got other telemetry, like uh, even latitude, longitude, battery information, then you can play that and this will appear. This comes into its own when we put it together with something else. Um, so we could play warnings depending on, for example, if your battery is below a certain threshold, then we could say play a battery. Much like if you've got RSSI in your quad, there's an automatic, it will say RSSI warning, RSSI critical, depending on the level you're at. That's a different uh, subject because we go on to talking about logical switches, which is how we make the conditions to make that available. But what we found there, for example, is we haven't got, we haven't got stabilized mode or something that says angle. So these are the tracks you've got. Um, let's go look at where those come from and then I'll look at how you can make your own ones to put on the card so you can do your own tracks. So if you've got a function that you want and you want it to say a certain thing, then you can say that thing. So what I've done is just stick the SD card for the radio in my computer here and all the normal stuff's here. And the folder we're interested in is called sounds. Under sounds, you've got a load of uh, different folders depending what language you speak. Uh, I'd say wipe these out, but generally speaking, there's so little space taken up and SD cards are so cheap, you, you don't really have to. So I'm speaking English, believe it or not. So this is uh, the folder I'm interested in. And you will see here some quite recognizable things. So if we look at Acro here and we play that. Acro mode on. You see, it says Acro and uh, Ditto, all the other modes. Flight mode seven. Are here. And so what we'd have to do if we wanted to actually put anything Too low. on is basically put a sound in this folder and also on this one there's something called system now the system sounds are the sort of default uh, sounds that are always there so they're the sort of general radio so when it does the countdowns or the warnings or even the sort of hello and welcome to open TX it's all in here and it's literally um, if we look at some of these wave files three we've got like numbers being ten. spoken and we've got things like feet per second feet per second and trim center trim center if if you've ever messed with those you will notice that when i use my normal radio all these sounds are replaced and what i did i literally had a look at everything in this folder and then i got my daughter when she was about how long ago was this this was about eight years ago so she would have been about uh, seven or eight i got her to basically stand there and speak into a microphone and say all these things. Now the only problem with doing this is sometimes OpenTX slightly changes the file names or slightly adds or deletes different things and sometimes you need to go mess around with it. But if you want to replace this you can do. It's just a question of basically recording every one of these and replacing it. 
that looks like this. This is the my backup of the sounds I've got. So if I go into my system and I say, let's speak something. Three. We get a... Uh, Seven. A cute little girl speaking stuff. And uh, all, all the... All the bits RS are. signal low. And you'll notice what I've got here is a completely different set of things. So when we first set this up, I was flying my uh, NASAS uh, based quad. So Attitude. We've got lots of um, things for NASA. This Pilot one. Assist. Pilot Assist is, is for the Storm OSD. And we didn't do this in very good quality. It was... That's just some more fixed wing stuff. Off. And we've got GPS mode. GPS. So cute, isn't it? Um, we recorded this with a really dodgy microphone and then we sort of boosted the volume. So it all sounds a little bit rough and ready. But at the same time, it's it's something I can't recapture because uh, she doesn't speak like that now. She's 15. But if you wanted to do this, there is just a few things you need to consider. So I'll take it as read that not many people want to do the system sounds. But if, if you want to do them, you want to do them. So all we need to do is, is basically put the sound in in our folder so for example I could say uh, let's take our self level and we'll just copy that over into here and now when I plug that in it should appear there there are a couple of little restrictions about what this must look like you can't use more than six characters for a file name this seems to have changed I remember setting this up on the Tyrannus the first time I think it was up to eight characters because what I noticed is when I took the sounds from the Tyrannus and put them into a more up-to-date radio some of them disappeared and that's literally because it wouldn't recognize the file name so make sure your file names are less than six characters uh, obviously you need to get a little bit creative with what you call them but as long as you know what they mean you're fine they should be wave format files and bits per sample 16 or 8 uh, your compression codec should be PCM. So in order to figure out how to do this, let's do one. The The only thing I would say about recording it is try and use a microphone. Now it doesn't have to be any sort of, you know, special microphone or anything. I'm at this point using like a Blue Snowball microphone, which I use to use my voiceovers. But I really did um, use a, a rubbish microphone when I recorded those ones with my daughter. Um, but if you've got like a phone and that's got any sort of mic like the iPhone comes with a default mic that's pretty good you can just move those into your computer and uh, edit them that way so let's do a quick recording I'm going to use audacity because it's a free package and it lets you export in the right sort of thing uh, and let's do a quick recording let's edit that let's save it and let's put it on the card so we know how to do it okay and this is audacity I'm going to record a sample here but of course if you'd recorded one on your phone or something you could just open it up and, and edit it if you wanted to. So as an example, here is uh, one of the sounds. Acro mode on. And what this is showing is, is basically the waveform that uh, you'd get. And you need to look at sort of how it's it's formed. You notice the we, we're not peaking too much, but Acro we're, mode we're up towards on. the top. So we want it sort of nice and loud, but not so it, it's uh, clipping basically so I'm going to try and record stuff I've got my uh, blue snowball snowball mic here uh, as I said you, you can use any mic you like uh, you can sort of tidy up a little bit in here um, hopefully this should work because I'm also screen recording this so let, let's hope for the best so let's record me saying horizon mode because that was missing horizon mode so we've got a little sample there we can play it back horizon mode and that sounds pretty good. Uh, one thing we've got though is that big gap there, and this is what you'll you'll get if you're recording a lot of stuff, because you don't get the in out points really right. And we can just see where it starts there, just here. Horizon mode. So what I can do, I can just take, drag, and hit delete. And where's it end? Horizon mode. Just about there, doesn't it? Get rid of that bit. And then it should be a lot punchier. What we got then? Horizon mode. Horizon mode. Now, in terms of volume, this is probably okay, but if you want to boost it, if it's a little bit quiet, then if you go to Amplify, which is from the effects menu, Horizon mode. So it's kind of boosted it to a peak amplitude of zero, which is probably about right. Let's try that out. Uh, and you'll see now the the peak is a little bit better. Mode. 
we should actually rewind it. Horizon mode. So that's good, not clipping, nice and, uh, well, it's got the right sounds basically. So let's save this. Um, I want this as the format of 16-bit uh, PCM rather than 32-bit float. Uh, that's one of the things to note. And what we can do, we just go to the menu and say export audio, which is hidden off screen, helpfully enough. And I've plugged my Tyrannus in, so I can go straight to sounds and EN, and then I can call it Horiz. And I'm saving as 16-bit PCM WAV file. And then it just comes up with some meta tags we don't need to worry about, so we can do that. And so that's there as well. So let's see if we've got those sounds now on the radio, okay. Back on the radio, now we had that track that we sort of had to use for flight mode normal for that center point. Flight mode normal. So let's see if we can change that now to the one we wanted, which is, I was gonna say this is like um, angle mode, so I wanted to say self level, which is there. Let's see how that works. Acro mode on. And back to self level. Self level. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a disc there because a completely different voice. And let's try my new one. So my new one was for Horizon, which is down there on uh, the bottom position. If we go up and do play track, and then go to Horizon, or Horiz as I called it, and then we go back to self level. Self and back to Horizon. Horizon mode. There's my silly voice. So there's, I feel there's a bit of a, a, a weirdness no, when you've got on. one voice there, another voice there, Horizon and mode. another voice there, which is one of the reasons I replaced all the system sounds, but that is a, a, like a big deal. It's a big effort for people. There are also, instead of doing it yourself, if you don't want to hear your voice or you know someone who knows voice, then there, if you Google, there's loads of uh, basically text-to-speech type services. So you get a kind of, you know, the, the Apple type Siri voice or something, uh, and you can replace all of them like that. And you can make your extra things like self-level or horizon. You can make those with sounds that are similar to what's in there already. And there's lots of voice packs out there also that people have done. So you can add one of those packs in. And of course, if you've got a sample that doesn't fit, just get it into Audacity or something like that and save it back out as that 16-bit PCM file and you should be good. That's all for this one. As I mentioned, one of the things I wanted to touch on next time is being able to use things like sounds for alarms. So if something's happened, if there's a set of circumstances you want to know about, uh, then we'll talk about that. And this is, this is involving something called logical switches, but I'll cover that next time. Anyway, hope that was useful for now. I'll catch you next one. Bye. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.